Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Easy Weeknight Cooking with Heart's Desire Spice Blends. We are back with a recipe that does absolutely fantastic for this really weird May weather. I don't know if you can tell, but it's like raining and we've got a frost warning. What's with Mother Nature? What are we doing tonight? Split pea soup. The secret split pea soup. And what's so secret about this? The yumminess that goes into it, my darlings. You never would have guessed the two spice blends that are actually going into this. Slaw some veggies and garam masala. Normally I put in a bit of curry into this, but these are just fabulous, absolutely wonderful. So what are we gonna need? We're going to need one pound of split peas, one to two tablespoons of butter, olive oil, your favorite sauteing medium, one clove of garlic, one to two chopped carrot, one medium to large onion, six cups thereabouts of chicken broth, pound of ham, or one and a half pound meaty ham bone. Yes, definitely gotta have that wonderful meat in there. And if you're not supposed to have that much ham, make sure you have some Wright's liquid smoke on hand and just add a cap full of that to your gold. So you're also going to need one teaspoon of slaw some veggies and one and a half teaspoons of garam masala. First of all, you're going to need some sort of a soup pot. And before you get actually cooking, you're going to want to rinse and sort your split peas. Make sure there's no stones in there, etc. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to turn on the heat and pour in our oil of choice right into our pan. This is between one and two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, which is going to be the probably one of the oils of choice if you're doing this low salt. If you're doing this low salt, cut back on the ham and go for an oil rather than butter. There you go. So now that this is starting to heat up, I've got a good amount of heat coming up off the pan. We're gonna throw in our chopped one medium to large onion. Mm, love this sizzle. And our carrots. And next, we're going to grab our clove of garlic. Now, I like using a garlic press on my garlic because the more garlic hits air, the more intense the flavor. So this effectively minces your garlic without any work. Just squeeze, you're done. Meanwhile, you're developing a whole lot of flavor from the garlic just by letting oxygen hit that minced garlic. And if you've got a really good garlic press like mine, you can put the garlic clove in there, paper and all. It just spits out the guts and there you go. Give that a toss. And what we're doing here while this starts to brown, we're looking for browning mainly on the bottom of the pan and your onions. Softening the carrots a little bit, releasing the flavors of that wonderful garlic and creating what is known as fawn on the bottom of the pan. And what that is, is caramelization. The sugars and the starches and often proteins coming off your food, brown on the bottom of your pan and caramelize, that changes the flavor complex of your food and creates extra richness. So definitely sauteing your food is a wonderful thing, especially when you saute it in the pan that you're gonna be cooking in later. Seriously wonderful. Give this another stir, creating some really great flavor there. I see a little bit of browning already starting. That's fabulous. While that continues, I'm going to take some of this stuff out of the way. Now I'm going to give this another stir. We have some browning on the bottom of the pan. And I love it when the garlic starts browning, the whole nine yards there. The onions are softened and that's what we're looking for. We're looking mainly for just a little bit of browning, the onions to soften, your carrots are starting to soften. You've got a lot of flavor from that sauteed garlic going through your stuff. So now we can turn this off. I'm gonna throw in my chunks of ham in here. Mm. This is a really, really meaty split pea soup. I really love a meaty split pea soups. Now, like I said earlier, if you 
can't have the ham, your best friend is going to be that liquid smoke. That's going to add a lot of that hamminess to your split pea soup without the salt. Meanwhile, I am coating my ham with all the rest of those juices. What I have back here, what's beeping, is the Instant Pot, and I've got some of this in there right now. It's fabulous. So go ahead and give that a stir, coat things really well, and now you're going to add your split peas. Give that a quick toss, because I have found that split peas will commonly stick together if given a choice. It's got all about those wonderful starches in there, right? Now, your six cups of broth. Give this a quick stir before I pour in the rest to keep those split peas from sticking to each other. Mmm, chicken broth. Yummy. I have done this with beef broth too. If you need the extra richness because you don't have ham, beef broth may be your jam. Give it another stir. You're going to bring this up to a boil, then reduce to a simmer for about one to one and a half hours. And, oh, oh, not before you throw in your spices though. The garam masala is wonderful. That's what I just threw in here. It's nutty, it's citrusy, it's a little earthy, it's sweet and savory at the same time and then has this gorgeous finish of black pepper. Now, what that does is it gives that hint of curry to your split peas, which are an awful lot like lentils, so they've got their own taste, right? It is your secret ingredient in here. It adds that indescribable dimension to your split pea soup. And why did I choose Slossom Veggies? Slossom Veggies has all the feels, all the feels for traditional American cooking. It's got your, of course, your garlic, your onion, your black pepper. It's also got mustard, which is very savory, very buttery tasting. It also has a good amount of thyme in it, which is always called for in a really good split pea soup. Your onions, garlic, black pepper, and thyme are your backbone. So adding the slaw some veggies in here is adding the backbone of your soup. You definitely don't want to skimp on that. Matter of fact, I was debating whether or not to put more sauce and veggies than garam masala, but maybe not. It's all good. <laughs> so cover this, bring it to a boil, cover it, and then reduce the heat and simmer for one to one and a half hours until the peas are tender. Then what do you get? Mm, I'm gonna move this aside. And it is time to bring over that split pea soup that's in the Instant Pot over here. Before I bring that over, it needs to vent. So there's going to be lots of hissing. Mm. So with this, what I've done is I have let this cook on a pressure cook for about 20 minutes. That will soften your split peas very, very well. Let everything just do its marvelous thing. I will commonly put a roast in for about 15 minutes uh, when I want to make sure that it is really good and tender. Um, when I'm looking for a roast to be even more tender, I'll put it in for a little longer, maybe as much as half an hour if I want it literally falling apart and it's a huge roast. So 20 minutes is probably not too long on this. Uh, 15 is very, very tempting when you're doing a pressure cook. Or you can do a slow cook all day long. Just put everything together in the morning, slap it in your slow cooker, and plug it in. There you go. So I'm gonna check on this real quick. Mm. What we have here is beautiful. There we go. Love that stuff. Now, this has actually broken up quite a bit of the uh, of your split peas already. And so about a 15 minute pressure cook will probably give you peas that pretty much hold their shape. If you do this on the stove and do not want peas to hold their shape, you want that really creamy, dreamy split pea soup, you're gonna grab your whisk and whisk those peas. And uh, some people will go ahead and break out the blender, but then you don't get 
those chunks of meat and your chunks of carrot. I like having, you know, a chunk of meat and a chunk of carrot in my soup. I really do love that. So this texture is fabulous, absolutely wonderful. So what we have here is beautiful. Big chunks of carrot, big chunks of ham, steamy draininess that is making my mouth water like crazy. Mm. And if you didn't know what it tasted like, you would taste this undescribable, but that that citrusy nutty garam masala just adds so much to this. Oh my goodness gracious. Mm. The ham does a wonderful job of adding its own flavor to this. You do not need salt in this at all. Oh my word. It's silky, it's dreamy. Those carrots are still wonderfully sweet. It's got that not quite curry earthiness to it, but it's a little bit more in the background. So from our house to yours, you guys keep things tasty. We will see you next week. And you guys have a great one this week.